All right, we are still in the quadratics unit. Now we're going to be taking it to the graphing and the characteristics portion. So we've dealt with how to solve for equations and quadratics. Now we're gonna look at how they're graphed and how to manipulate them a little bit. So um, let's start with the standard form of the quadratic. Uh, this is something that you know we've done before. Um, just to recap, you know, ax squared plus bx plus c. And a quadratic is a second degree function. Okay, remember that means you look at the variables exponents. Um, and so, hold on here, whoops. So if we were to kind of, um, hello. Um, I mean, I think th these are pretty straightforward things like the coefficients a, b, and c. Um, just to kind of throw in there, just for you to kind of uh, remember that, you know, the, this, this a is the for the quadratic term, because it's the uh, second, and then the linear term, x and then the constant is just the c itself, okay? So just to kind of recap what the degrees are, um, and let's move on. Now the quadratic graph, it, you know, if you've graphed it before, I'm sure you've seen that it's a u, and this is what's called a parabola, okay? And uh, in this parabola, there are, um, you know, there's a minimum point, you know, and there is a maximum point. It depends which way it's kind of facing up or down, and so this maximum or minimum value of the parabola is called the vertex, okay? And this is going to be a really important um, point that we're going to look at a lot. So now the, ver now the maximum value, now obviously, you know, we'll talk a little bit about this A business. Um, but remember, um, some of you had some trouble with this, but the maximum and the minimum value, you just write the Y value. So for example, sorry, this. so if it's right here, you know, you don't say that this point zero, zero is the minimum value. You would just say y equals zero is the minimum value, okay? And the same thing on this um, previous slide, this maximum value, um, you wouldn't say the maximum is zero, zero, you would say just the maximum is y equals zero, okay? So something to note there, please start making sure that you're writing the max and the minimum value correctly. Now the axis of symmetry, if you notice that the parabola is symmetric, right? Oh, horrible parabola. And so there is a line of symmetry that's called the axis of symmetry. And so it's usually kind of drawn, you know, right in the middle, you know, and it goes right through the vertex, right at that point. So axis of symmetry, you know, the axis of symmetry, we, we write it like a line. So we would say like X equals something. Just to remember when you graph X equals three, that is a vertical line right at where x is three, like this. So x of symmetry is another vocab word that we will be looking at. And so let's, let's do it. Let's graph f of x equals x squared. And I know we've, we've seen this, and actually I think in previous units you've uh, looked at these characteristics. So let's look at the x-intercept. So this is the parent function. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis, um, and it it goes right through here at zero, zero. So the x-intercept would be zero, zero. And actually the y-intercept, if you think of it, where it crosses the y, it's actually at the same spot, zero, zero. Now the minimum value, remember, we don't write the point of the minimum. We're gonna write where the y value is, and this minimum be y equals zero. The vertex, which is right here, so this parent function, pretty much the same point serves as a lot of other parts of the characteristics. The axis of symmetry here, you can clearly see that it's just the y axis, right? The, the line that it's reflected over, it's going to be, so we're just gonna write the axis of symmetry as x equals zero, okay? Don't write the y axis, you gotta give it to me in equation terms. Now, where is it increasing? Remember, increasing, you have to look at it from the x standpoint, okay? So from here to here, you see how it's increasing or here to theoretically infinity. So our interval of increase would be zero. Now, increase, you can't say at zero, it is also increasing. So we must use um, a parenthesis, zero to 30, uh, not 30, <laughs> infinity. And in the same way decreasing, it decreases from negative infinity all the way up to right here, right? So we would say it goes from negative infinity to zero. 
And remember, increase, decrease, do not include that point where it changes from increase to decrease, okay? Now, domain, domain, all possible x values, right? So we can just write negative infinity to infinity. Our range, our range, our lowest y value is at zero. Now, does it include zero? It does. So it would be bracket zero, and it goes all the way up to positive infinity. Our end behavior. So as x, so remember there's two parts to it. As x goes to, let's start with the negative infinity. What does f of x go to? f of x, that means our y value. As we go far left, it goes to positive infinity. Right? And then as x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes to, let's see, it also goes up to infinity. Rate of change. Now, when it says from negative two to one, remember this is an interval, this is not a coordinate point. So let's plug in um, negative two in for, so let's first figure out what negative two is, f negative two is. And when you do that, that becomes four. And then f of one is just one. So that means when we find our, our you know, rate of change, which is pretty much our slope, you know, we'll go from negative two to one. So it'd be one minus four over one minus negative two. And so from negative two to one, our rate of change is negative three over three, which is negative one. Okay, that's the slope or that line from negative two to one. You know, it'd be like, it, that would be our slope line right there. So it makes sense that it would be a negative one, okay? So just a, a couple recap stuff. This should, none of this should be new. But uh, if it's uh, refreshing, that's good. Yeah. Do you remember graph transformations? In our other units, we've talked about how, you know, there's like a vertical translation, um, you know, horizontal translation, stretch, you know, shrink. Um, so we're going to bring that back because we're going to analyze graphs using graph transformation. So I know in with uh, exponentials, we had it where it was like, you know, 2 to the x plus three, and then times three, and then minus four. And remember, we had this concept where it was inside the parent function. Remember, if it was inside the parent function, do you remember if it goes horizontal or vertical? It would be horizontal, okay? It has a horizontal, it deals with horizontal movement. And then outside the parent function, it's going to deal with vertical movement, like vertical dilation, vertical translation, okay? And so we're going to see some examples. Maybe it might become more apparent to you. Now, but before I do that, I want to just show here uh, what some of these transformations do. Okay. I'm going to end the show. I'm going to keep. I'm going to go over to so, ooh, this one. Okay. Whoops, wrong one. 